for meeting of the Bicycle Advisory Committee. And first of all, we're going uh, to have, Megan will give us a brief uh, introduction as far as the rules for our Zoom call. Hello, everyone. So please note, as this is a public <coughs> meeting, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Beaverton's website. Minutes are still being taken as well. Please make sure you are muted unless you are the active speaker. Attendees are automatically muted. For any quick comments, you can hold your spacebar to unmute and release the spacebar to become muted again. Please be aware of items in your video background which could be offensive or distracting to others. You can select the virtual background in the drop down list next to the video icon. For our attendees, you can type your questions in the question and answer chat. All questions will be addressed during the public comment time on the schedule. If you would prefer, you can also click the raise hand button to ask your question directly. And we will make sure to come around to you as soon as we are able to. For attendees who are joining by phone, you can raise your hand by typing star nine. If we have multiple people waiting to speak, the order of who will be speaking will be put in the chat box. You're welcome to have open discussion in the chat function at the bottom of your screen, but please be aware the chat becomes public record. I will be monitoring the chat, so feel free to let me know if you have any technical difficulties and I can troubleshoot for you. Great, thanks so much. So what I'd like to do is just very briefly have the members uh, that are here in attendance quickly go and introduce themselves and then we're gonna have uh, counselor slash mayor elect Beatty will move her right up to the top of the agenda so she can share her information. So I'll just introduce myself, Mike Mulligan. I'm the chair of the Bicycle Advisory Committee. So whoever would like to introduce themselves, I'll just go right around. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Dean Seneschal Biggs and I'm the staff liaison. I'm going to go to Michael H. Hi, I'm Michael Hashizume. I'm the recorder for the BAC and I've been on the committee for a few years now. And Israel? My name is Israel Lorellis. I, this is my first year on the committee. So I'm glad to be here. Great. And John? Wait, John Vogler, uh, new member to the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Glad to be here. And Amy? Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I'm the youth liaison for the BAC. Perfect. Welcome, Corey. Good evening, everyone. I'm Corey McManus, an ex officio member from TriMet. I've uh, been participating with the committee for a few years. Terrific. Thanks. And finally, Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Koppel. I'm the vice chair of the Bicycle Committee, and this is the end of my second year. So I think that's everybody that's in attendance right now. So, Councillor Beatty, the uh, screen is all yours. Awesome. Sorry, I can't figure out how to use the virtual background. We're in our camper van. We're heading up to ski at Mount Bachelor. So my husband and I have a kids free night. And so we're uh, going to stay COVID safe and sleep in the parking lot, which has been a really awesome gift. Um, I know it's been a while since I've seen you guys. I had to take the last meeting off after the election. It was intense uh, for my family. So we did a little bit of a, a trip and, and stayed at home and, and hung out. But I wanted to give you a couple updates from the city perspective. We are, we made an offer to an interim city manager on Tuesday night. We can't release the name yet. It's not public. We had three awesome, super amazing candidates. Uh, we went through three rounds of interviews. And so I would expect by the end of the week that person would be public that we could share. Um, just the typical HR hiring, we have to make sure we all agree and, and don't announce somebody that doesn't uh, eventually come into the role. Uh, but our, the interim city manager is set to take, uh, come in uh, hopefully between Christmas and New Year's to kind of get ready to go because as the other charter expires on December 31st, so we need a city manager starting January 1. Um, 
there'll be a little bit of uh, difference on how the city manager versus the strong mayor operate, but it's been uh, pretty smooth going for staff and city council. And then we plan to have the interim for six months and then go through the process again for a full-time city manager. Um, the interim position doesn't attract as many candidates that are maybe currently working somewhere else because you wouldn't want to give up a full-time job for a six-month gig. So under the advice of people that do this professionally, we went with the interim route and uh, we didn't pick an internal staff member since we didn't have like a assistant, a city manager, anything that had this kind of job classification. So we're bringing a professional in to help us. Um, and then once we start the process for a full-time city manager, there'll be a lot more public engagement is my goal. I think we didn't do a best of a job letting people know that uh, they could come and participate in Tuesday's meeting and have a voice in the process. And I would say the difference from the community is when it's a strong mayor, everyone in the community decides who the mayor is going to be running the city versus a, a city manager is hired by the six city councilors. So it's basically what we think and what we want in that person. We did take staff, our senior staff participated in interviews and a lot of our staff participated in Tuesday night's meeting to select them. So there's a kind of the big things happening. We'll have the official swearing in for all four members that were elected, our newly created seat by that's being filled by Nadia Hassan, Allison Tivnon that was elected in May, Mark Fagan is being reelected, re and of course um, I'm being sworn in as the new mayor. And then I, we are having a work session next week to decide how we're going to fill my council seat. So once I'm elected, obviously I give up my council seat, uh, or once I'm sworn in as mayor, I give up my council seat. And so the council has the option to do a short-term appointment, meaning we would pick someone from the community through an application process uh, and have them, uh, they cannot fulfill the remainder of my two-year term for our charter. They'd have to run again in May, or our charter this time allows us to leave the position blank, open. So we don't have to fill it. So the incoming council, not the one currently serving, gets to make that decision in our first meeting in January. So stay tuned. If you've ever thought about running for office, this is another opportunity. Uh, given term limits are now coming in, council positions will be up a lot more frequently. And so we won't have anyone serving more than three terms with our new charter. So I think it's a really good opportunity to get more people serving in local government. Um, that's kind of big, the big thing council's been focusing on. We did name our second judge, Judge Bakari, through a similar process to how we hired the interim city manager. We had lots of meetings. And then we had a community meeting in um, early November for the community to meet her. And she'll be sworn into office on January 5th as well. So new judge, new mayor, two new city councilors, and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. And uh, there's not been a lot of time for us to focus on anything else. So that's what we've been doing. And I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has them. Thank you. Any questions? Tough crowd, all right. <laughs> well, thanks so much for that update. And uh, we look forward to, uh, as we go forward. Now, are you gonna continue to be the liaison to our committee? Do you know if that's been determined yet or how that's going so to work? The so the mayor doesn't typically serve as liaisons to boards okay. and commissions. So likely it will be reassigned. I'll probably, we're gonna be doing all of our, the council will be doing a council retreat, uh, which is typical in January. This year, I'm gonna suggest we do multiple ones because we're changing our form of government, bringing in a lot of new leaders, but typically uh, in the past, the council president would, um, assign them out. And so it'll, it'll either be me or the council president assigning those people. So if you super want someone, you better email them. I'm just kidding. But whoever <laughs> you guys get will be great. But I'll likely, uh, I'll likely be at least on in the first month until we can figure out who we're going to reassign my committees to. Okay, perfect. Well, I appreciate that. And I appreciate taking time to join in our meeting today and have a wonderful time skiing up there at Bachelor and decompressing. Thank you. It's, it's the best COVID activities. You already wear a mask all the time. We have a camper van, so we don't have to see anyone. So it's, been, it's a good, uh, good COVID activity for us. Terrific. Awesome. You take Thank care. You. Be safe. Bye. All right. So why don't we 
come back around to the approval of our October minutes. And I recall, in, uh, Jean, your note that there was just one change that had been made uh, that was, uh, John had mentioned it was five uh, sites for uh, bike repair stands versus the four that we had had. And then Michael was just saying he's just going to correct the spelling on uh, Councillor Beatty's first name. It was already done. Or we need to drop in an E there. But other than that, please take a look if you haven't already and give it a couple of minutes and then I'll be entertaining a, a, or a, to approve them motion. I move we approve the minutes. I have a motion for the approval for the minutes. Do I have a second? A second. Second for Israel. Everybody that was in attendance at that meeting, uh, please say aye. I'm approving them. Aye. 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 The minutes are approved for October. So that brings us to public comment. And Megan, is there one person out there? Anybody else? We have a couple guests, but I don't have any comments yet. Okay. Well, for our guests, if you have any comments or any questions or would like to just uh, share your names and your uh, interest in the committee, please uh, let's take this time and let you do that. And it And if not, why don't we just, we can continue on with the meeting and Megan, if anybody uh, in our public uh, group uh, has questions or comments during the course of the meeting, uh, please uh, enter those with the chat and then we can follow back around and uh, address those, I think, a little bit later. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay. Well, we're cruising right along. We took care of our council liaison update. So is, uh, Dan, in yet from? I don't think he's on yet. He, right? Okay. You haven't seen him yet, Megan. You haven't seen Dan. No, I haven't seen Dan yet. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't I um, jump down to my update, and then um, Dan uh, hopefully will be here by then, and we can get him started on his presentation. Does that sound good? Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Um, so, um, I thought it would be helpful just to share with all of you an update on our recruitment for our incoming um, 2021 um, Bicycle Advisory Committee roster. Um, I think when we last met, I had shared with you that we were looking to fill a couple of positions, and I think we had about nine applications come in. Um, so, um, we had a very successful recruitment, and um, I can tell you that um, I have, I, how it works is we uh, receive the applications, um, we review them, we do interviews, and then um, it's the staff liaison's role to make recommendations um, to the mayor and the city council for um, who should be appointed to join our committee. So um, I can share with you that I have recommended both Mike and Cara to continue on. Um, so Kara is currently our, um, our one alternate. Um, she's now going to become a full member, which is a three-year term. So they'll both be back next year. Hooray. We get to see them again. Um, 
And then um, there are three others who will be joining us. Um, uh, we'll have one new full member and then two as alternates. Um, so some new faces to join our group, which will be great. Um, Council will be making appointments um, next week at their regular meeting um, Tuesday night, and they do it for all of the boards and commissions um, uh, this time every year. And so at our next meeting in January, you'll see uh, all those new folks um, join us. Um, so uh, one thing to know um, is that if you've noticed, we haven't seen Tree here in the past few meetings. Um, so both Mike and I reached out to him and he's decided to resign from his position. Um, and he shared just that family commitments have made a scheduling conflict for him. Um, Mike spoke with him, Mike, I don't know if you wanna add anything more. So um, we used the opportunity of the recruitment process to fill also then his position um, on the BAC. Um, so we're sad to lose him. I know he was a great um, I know he was a great MC at Spike Beaverton last year, um, and he was just a really great volunteer in that effort. So um, I know he, uh, it was a hard decision for him, I think, to to, um, to leave this group. But Mike, do you want to share anything else from your conversation with him? I just, yeah, I had some uh, email conversations with Tree, and I think just echoing what Jean was saying is that uh, he had, really needs to focus on some things with the family and he wanted to really make sure that he's giving his full self when he's a part of the Bicycle Advisory Committee. And I assured him that he has done amazing things in the time that he, short time that he's on the committee and encouraged him by all means when uh, circumstances change that he should uh, reapply because uh, he has that level of commitment and involvement that really makes committees like this one uh, function well and achieve good things. And so I hope that he'll return and join in with the committee uh, in the future. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mike. So, yeah, so um, we'll have new folks join us next month. And then finally, I just, I need to um, acknowledge Amanda, um, our vice chair for being a part of the process. Uh, to review all the applications and join me for all of our interviews. Um, since Mike was um, up for renewal, um, I look to Amanda since, um, to sort of take on the, that role. Um, typically, it's the chair that assists the staff liaison, and in this case, um, it was Amanda this year. So thank you again, Amanda. Um, it was fun to get to spend a little more time with you um, through all those interviews. It was a pleasure um, to help out. I was so, it was just a joy to talk to so many applicants who were so enthusiastic about the opportunity to volunteer. Yeah, that's great. Um, I just wanna make sure I saw the chat pop up. Okay. Hello, Sean Martinez. Great. Um, and then just a few other updates. Um, so um, Marilek Baby already gave you the um, city interim city manager and city manager recruitment updates. So I'll skip that. I had sent something to you in email. Um, but a couple other things, um, and again, these just to reiterate what I sent you from our um, city update. Um, Beaverton Winter Light um, is happening. So uh, for those of you who remember and know, um, we typically do a tree lighting event in downtown Beaverton at City Park. Um, this year with COVID, we're not able to put on a large event and invite people um, to gather downtown. So instead, we've created um, several different um, displays um, around the city. So uh, if you follow the city on social media, you'll start to see things pop up there. But the idea is to um, go uh, visit all those sites, take your selfies, take your family photos, and kind of enjoy the season in a socially distant and safer way. Um, uh, also, the library has announced uh, One Book, One Beaverton, and the book Just Mercy, A Story of Justice and Redemption by Brian Stevenson is our book this year. Um, you can um, learn more about it on the library's website, um, and there'll be a whole series of special events. And then um, one more thing is that um, ODOT uh, is doing some public outreach um, and has a virtual open house. Uh, through December 17th for their Oregon 217 Auxiliary Lanes project. 
Um, it's a $134 million construction project that's going to be under construction for about four years. So they're starting to get the word ab out about what those construction impacts will be. Um, so uh, go ahead and you can find out some more information about that at highway217.org. Um, there's some bicycle and pedestrian related infrastructure with that project. Um, and I have been in touch with that team and it may be that um, there might be some information there uh, that we might invite them to come to a future meeting and, and talk with you all about those projects and improvements um, so you all can weigh in. So you may hear more about that um, in the future. Those are my updates um, that I came with tonight. So, uh, and I see Dan is now here. So let me go back to what the agenda has. Um, I'll throw it back to you, Mike. All right, thank you so much. So Dan uh, Turk is here with the city of Beaverton and he's going to give us an introduction to the Beaverton Downtown Loop project that is starting to get uh, kicked off and having some committees that are gonna be involved uh, writing feedback. So I will turn it over to Dan. We look forward to learning about this. Thanks, Mike, and uh, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, I was listening in a little bit on your conversation. Uh, two things I want to say of uh, non-loop related uh, information. First, uh, you know, Jean is my boss, and uh, I don't know, I hope you guys realize how lucky you are to have her as part of your group. Uh, she's just a very nice person and just very capable as well. So I'm sure that you've noticed both of those things. Uh, so that's the sucking up portion of uh, my presentation. But uh, the other thing I wanted to say was uh, uh, I, you know, I was an avid cyclist, especially when I lived in uh, Boston. I would, I would bike all the time, even in the depth of winter. The coldest I ever was was in my whole life was biking across Harvard Bridge on the way to MIT uh, one particular day. And I remember it very, uh, very distinctly. Uh, unfortunately, my knees are a little rickety, so I can't bike as much anymore. But I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping to start biking again. And uh, I have a couple questions if there's time later on about uh, how to get a good used bike. I'm sure you guys would know, but uh, that's not the purpose of me being here. Uh, so uh, let me uh, let me see if I can share my screen. This is always a little tricky. Uh, let's see where. Oh my gosh. There it is. Okay. Uh, okay. Are you? Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try to be. Uh, I'm going to try to be brief so that uh, Gene and I can uh, get your questions, which is and comments and concerns, which is really why that why we're here today. So. Uh, my name is Dan Turk. I'm the project manager of the Beaverton Downtown Loop Project. Uh, I've been with the city since July, uh, and this is one of the projects that I'm managing, uh, along with a couple other that a couple others that have to do with the downtown. I moved with my wife and child during the pandemic uh, across country, uh, in no large part to the fact that I really uh, like the city of Beaverton and the downtown, and am very happy to be working on a project that could really uh, help the downtown be what everybody would like it to be. Uh, so as an introduction, the loop concept is really one uh, in which uh, there's a building of a strong connection between two different types of the different parts and different types of downtown. Beaverton Central, which is on the northern side of downtown, which has some of the newer redevelopment, bigger blocks, and then the old downtown, on the other side, uh, on the southern side, which is smaller blocks, uh, rectangular grid, uh, smaller structures. Uh, the idea is to use the uh, streetscape right away of Hall Boulevard and Watson Avenue, which are a two-way uh, or one-way pair that go north and south through the downtown uh, to build that connection, basically by changing the way the streets look and how they work. The division of space between modes, uh, streetscape elements, things like that. Those are the means by which we're, uh, we're looking to accomplish this stronger connection. So, and really this is something limited to the right of way of these two streets. Uh, right now along these two streets, uh, people that are walking and biking face a lot of safety challenges. There's a good amount of traffic on cross streets, major cross streets such as Canyon Road and Farmington Road. Both of those carry about 30,000 vehicles per day. 
Uh, and then along the streets themselves, Watson and Hall are one way and they carry about 10,000 vehicles per day. So there's a lot of cars there. The traffic patterns are such that you get a, you get a lot of cars waiting and then basically speeding up. Uh, for example, when they leave this intersection here at Canyon Road and go downhill, they have three full lanes and it's like the Indianapolis 500 there. So these are not the best conditions uh, to be biking in or walking in. And then in addition to that, there's, a, there's an inconsistency in terms of what is available, what space, and how, it's, uh, how it looks along these corridors, sometimes even within blocks. Uh, I've walked them many times and I'm always amazed at how complex each of the blocks can be uh, with respect to a lot of things. Uh, so there's a lot of high volumes uh, uh, of traffic. The other thing is there are good transit facilities. There are two stations nearby uh, here in Beaverton by City Hall and then over at the transit center here. And there's actually a, a bus, the 76, that goes up and down most of Hall and Watson, especially on the southern side. The city of Beaverton for a long time has had a community vision that really would, wants to have a vibrant downtown as a top priority. In 2016, they had some experts from ULI come by and help them give help give them some ideas about what could be done in terms of uh, revitalizing the downtown. The loop was identified as a concept there to, or to, to connect the north and the southern parts of the downtown. So then in 2017, the city launched the downtown design project, uh, which really in short tries, tried to develop an action plan to identify tangible ways that that community vision can be achieved. As part of the downtown design project, the urban design framework was created. Uh, and uh, this is basically a high level organi organizing structure to guide uh, shaping of the different character areas, rethinking the downtown streets, uh, and then defining the downtown through the identification of potential uh, gateway locations. And the loop was something that figured prominently as a central feature, again, to provide connectivity between the two main parts of the downtown. So where are we in the process of the downtown loop project? We're right here. Uh, we just finished the project scoping process. Uh, we came up with a good work plan, went out, uh, hired a consultant, negotiated with that consultant, uh, and the consultant uh, has just started and they will be in charge uh, or working with us on the planning process, uh, which will last about 10 months. Uh, the schedule will be one of the last slides. Uh, the scope of the project, this is again, the planning phase. Uh, we're in the first part of it, which is project initiation, uh, in which we're finalizing the, uh, the project scope and the engagement plan, how we go out and talk to the community. The second step is an inventory and analysis uh, looking at conditions on the ground and also plans and policies that are existing to identify uh, constraints and opportunities. The third step is uh, looking at what the project vision and goals for the project are, going out to the community and trying to find out what people really want to see this project do in terms of contributing to wider goals. And then the last part and the most important part of this process is the designing of several design alternatives based on the opportunities and constraints and the project vision and bringing this handful of design alternatives to the community uh, to see uh, which one uh, garners the most support, which one people are, can be behind. And then the last part of it is refining that preferred alternative, bringing it back to the council uh, and hopefully for an easy yes in terms of approving the plan and being able to move forward with the design uh, of the plan and the building of the plan. Community engagement is a very important part of this uh, planning, uh, planning phase. Really, it's, I strongly believe that it's a situation where to have a successful product, we need to have a successful process. Uh, so one of the first things that the consultant team is working on is an engagement audit, basically looking at how well the city has gone out and gotten engaged with the community uh, with respect to infrastructure projects to see what the base is upon which we can improve. Uh, and then also as part of engagement, uh, we're really 
keeping close touch with another important effort downtown by the city, which is the downtown equity strategy, uh, which is again, looking at how the city, uh, how the city uh, builds uh, and does things uh, from an equity standpoint. The project team is very multidisciplinary. It's led by Walker Macy, uh, and there are firms here that are public outreach firms, transportation firms, engineering firms, uh, and uh, both Gene and I are ecstatic with the quality of people and professionals that we've been able to, to hire to work with us through this uh, important phase of the project. The product of the project at the end of those four phases is a design concept that is buildable, uh, feasible, addresses community visions, and enjoys strong support. It's really a situation where if we have a good process, we're gonna have a good design and we're gonna have one that has some good strong support so that the council can give it an easy yes and we can move forward strongly to secure funding and to build something which anything you're gonna be building inside a urban area, especially a downtown area, uh, is not always easy and it's complicated and you know we need the support, the wider support to be able to do that. Uh, this design concept uh, will appear in plan and cross-section drawings, which go block by block, giving an idea of what the solution is gonna look like from a transportation and urban design point of view. We're not gonna get to the details of, you know, this is where a tree is gonna be, or this is where a bench is gonna be. It's not productive to get into those micro level discussions, but it's enough that we really can see what it's gonna look like along the whole downtown, knowing that again, each block presents special opportunities and, uh, and constraints. As part of that, uh, very importantly, we're gonna have planning level cost estimates. And then uh, probably the most important thing is the implementation strategy. Uh, this isn't just a list of things to do right now uh, and then stop. Uh, it's gonna be a whole progression of interventions, some of which can be done very quickly, some of which will be done as part of the infrastructure and maybe some of which will be saved for later on when no more momentum is built or there's more financing available. Uh, and as part of that, uh, I'm sure there's gonna be things that come up, questions that people have that we may need to study further uh, through other means. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of uh, sort of what a concept design looks like from a plan and cross-section point of view. Uh, again, it's very specific to the blocks to give an idea of how things change uh, along the way. And the project schedule uh, is we just began uh, near uh, basically middle of November, and we hope to have the plan approved uh, next, uh, next September. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, and uh, please, yeah, any, any observations, questions, comments, concerns, uh, uh, very welcome, and I'm just very happy to have the opportunity to listen to you guys. Thank you so much, Dan, for that overview, and I'll open it up to the committee if there are specific questions you have for Dan's or comments. Uh, you just uh, unmute yourselves, and we'll go one by one. Uh, I, this is John. I, I have a question for Dan. Uh, why did you uh, cut off the the uh, scope of the loop at Fifth Street. It seems like you want to stretch the boundaries a little bit, maybe go up to the new public services building up on Allen. I'm, I'm just curious why it, it seems such a tiny loop. That, that's a good question. Uh, it's a fundamental question, John, and one that we have to have a good answer for. Uh, Jean can add, please. Uh, she was been here a little longer. I do know that the original concept was to go only to Fourth Street on the south, and one of the reasons that we decided to go to Fifth Street was to the opportunity to connect with uh, the bicycle facilities that are on Fifth Street. Uh, Jean, I don't know if you have a better answer in terms of why we didn't go further. Yeah, so the, the concept itself, if you remember, Dan, can you go back to the, um, the framework from the DDP? Yeah, I'm going to try so that. To that diagram that shows the loop. This? That one. Yeah, the urban design framework. Um, that came out of our downtown design project. Um, and I would say that this, this as the loop as a concept is really focused on the downtown. Um, and this is really the, that fifth 
just beyond Fifth becomes um, the, the south boundary of downtown Beaverton. Um, that's not to say that we don't need better bicycle facilities and walking facilities on the rest of the couplet and then Hall continuing south. Um, but for this as a project really to unite sort of the area around Beaverton Central and Old, Old Town, um, that, that's what this concept is about. So um, I, I'd say it's more about the concept and less about the where it is a need for facility start and stop. Does that help answer that for you? Um, there's, a, there's a future project to go to keep going south. Um, but this, this, is, this is where we're focused at this point right now. And, and certainly yeah. with respect to, and I guess a little less so with respect to sidewalks and, and facilities for people walking, uh, you know, when we're talking about facilities for people biking, it's like Jean said, it's, it's, it's critical that, that what we're doing and what we're improving along this particular streetscape actually connects to the remainder of the network to provide, uh, to provide a complete solution for people. So that, that is something that's gonna come up and, and that could possibly be something that would need to be subsequently studied uh, or at least qualitatively taken into account as you know, a necessary part of, of you know, in order for this project to have its best outcome, it would need to have some complementary actions. Okay, well, thank, thank you for the explanation. Israel or Amanda? No, I think it looks great. I think it, the, the area that it's planned in right now, it, it just branches off into so many opportunities in different locations that I, I think it's gonna be good. I, I still think it's kind of early in the process. You know, once the process gets going a little further, we start hearing a little bit more information, uh, we'd be able to, you know, at least just ask for give for a little bit more input potentially um, for when it comes to the areas that that we <clears throat> excuse me that we oversee. So um, yeah, but as of right now, I think it's a it's a great start. It, the plan looks great. I I appreciate that comment. It is it is true, and you know one of the things that we try to do in terms of managing expectations is to let people know where we are in the process. It's you know it's clear at this point we're just beginning. You know, we're going to we're going to go out there and inventory what's there, get people's general visions. And certainly, like you said, we're going to get to the point where we're going to have some more tangible things for you guys to, you know, be able to give us some some critical input based on your experience and expertise, uh, you know, as bike riders, which will be very valuable. Amanda here. Oh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, if you're going to answer, that's more relevant than whatever my question was. Okay. Okay, well, let me let me share this. Um, so um, uh, I'll I'll chime in and just let you know that one of the you know Dan mentioned community engagement. Um, one of the things that uh, we will be that we're um, uh, we're working on um, pulling together is a community advisory committee for the project, um, and we've talked about wanting to have a representative from the bicycle advisory committee um, to serve on uh, on that committee. Um, uh, we would really want to have some bicycle expertise at the table. Um, it'll be a group of um, probably about 12 to 15 um, stakeholders. And we want to have just a, a, you know, a sort of a range of expertise and experiences um, to help guide our work. So uh, we will be probably reaching out um, to all of you at some point uh, in the next few weeks. I'm going to sort of say somewhere in that range. Um, so if this is a project that interests you um, and you think you've got some capacity to join us for, I want to say it's about five meetings that, that we're anticipating at this point over the, the next um, 10 months or so, um, give that some thought and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll reach out and we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Mike and figure out how we'll um, uh, get one of you appointed to join us. And then, you know, it, it really, as and Dan was saying too, we're, We'll come back at it at some key points here in the process, so you can all weigh in. Great. So I'd like to say that for us, for us, it's critical. I mean, having a member, a uh, part of the committee, but also, you know, just being able to come back to you guys for two reasons. One, you know, we want a good design. We want a design that works. I mean, this project is really about improving the pedestrian and, and bicycle experience. Uh, that that is that is what we're trying to do. 
So the, the better the design at even a, a micro and functional level is great. But then also this is a project where, you know, there may be some opposition from local businesses, you know, people that don't want to see things change. So part of the goal of our community engagement is building a broader base of support that we're going to need to be able to affect these changes. Yeah, a couple of Amanda. quick questions. Or Amanda, why don't you go, or you had a question, why don't you go first? Okay, um, so calling it the loop, I assume that means that the one-way streets will continue to function in the directions they're going. Um, so by that token, understanding that there's certainly concept art about how you were thinking about um, uh, the layout of the street versus the pedestrian sidewalk versus some dedicated bike lanes. Has there been any thought given to when bicyclists might ride less than expected on a one-way street? For example, if we need to be in a left lane to prepare for a left turn, you know, because cars normally expect us on the right. Just, just wondering if that's something that's been thought about. Well, I would say that's certainly something that will be thought about in terms of making the infrastructure uh, of use to people that are biking and making sure that we understand the movements. Uh, you know, we, we really, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for the, the, the work that's been done so far at a, at a more general level. It's probably something that has been entered into conversation, but we certainly, we're really trying to avoid sort of coming up with a solution yet and just letting the process uh, you know, guide us as to where to go. But that's, Amanda, that's exactly the type of thing I'm talking about in terms of making sure that, you know, you guys help us figure out, you know, when we present an alternative, you know, to make sure that that alternative actually works in terms of what we're trying to do. So Dan, a couple of just curiosity questions is as we're looking at this, uh, the loop and kind of that redevelopment of the downtown area, is there any consideration as far as potentially restricting or closing traffic on a particular road to turn it into more of a, uh, a walkway or something? I always think to uh, Boulder, Colorado and Pearl Street and I know that type of a uh, real community where people are shopping and walking and having that boulevard to themselves, whether that's at all uh, something that's in consideration of this type of a project? That's a good question, Mike. Uh, I can give you a long and probably meandering answer, uh, but, uh, you know, in general, you know, we want to go out and see what the community wants to see okay. from these roads. So, you know, we don't want this to be a process where we as technical people come in and say what should be done, but we support and, you know, we provide information and feedback about people's, uh, you know, preferences. Uh, so this could be a situation where we go out and there's a lot of appetite for doing something, some things like you were talking about. And then our responsibility is really to bring up what the potential implications could be of that. Okay. Uh, and also, uh, you know, in terms of, in terms of study, among other things, uh, having said that we have, we've had, we've had to dimension this study to a certain degree based on the type of alternatives that, that, that to look at. Right. And the, most of the alternatives I think we're looking at, again, within the budget that we have, and this could change, again, if people are really, you know, interested in, in, in doing something more, uh, would be things not, not really taking out lanes, uh, but, uh, you know, perhaps parking. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, two other things. In my interactions with the council, I, I definitely see in general some strong support to make some good changes to help, uh, you know, revitalize the downtown and change the land use of the downtown along the lines of perhaps what was done in Denver or the concepts. Uh, we will see how that support, you know, the general support kind of transfers to support over specific projects. And, you know, there are some significant impediments uh, and perhaps at least uh, present constraints uh, in terms of the roadways that that cross the downtown east and west uh, and, and our ability to do things along those lines. Uh, my personal hope is that we can get a process started that's going to improve the facilities enough where more people are biking and more people are walking and then little by little 
you know, you, you basically design the infrastructure and improve the infrastructure for the usage. So that something like what you're talking about may not happen right away, but we could start that process where it could happen in the future. Okay. Yeah, that's I ride frequently coming off Millican and then coming south on Watson. And uh, one of the things I'll be curious is just the involvement with the railroad, that uh, there's a consistent uh, bump when you come across the tracks where the road is always raising up. So seeing things that can help to improve that infrastructure. And also I'm curious with uh, the uh, parking lanes that have been uh, turned into seating for the restaurants during the pandemic, whether that's going to be a long-term thing and that being involved with it would be interesting. And offline, I'm happy to give you advice as far as used bikes. So this I'd love to find a good place or a good process to get a, a reasonable used bike. So oh, yes, right. Mike, uh, any help that you can give me. Okay. The best would be if you just happen to have a bike, a used bike for a large person just in the background there that you're not using. Unfortunately, that one has had its last ride. <laughs> That, that wouldn't get me very far either. That's right. It, it was a victim of Newton's, one of Newton's laws. Dan, um, check out the Washington County Bikes. Okay. And, yep. and also the Community Cycling Center on Alberta. They have okay. some really uh, nice uh, used bikes they fixed up and they're in great shape. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. The ones I was going to mention. I had a question um i it, i think a lot of the uh sort of projects downtown are really framed by the east west facilities you mentioned farmington and canyon are and i if i remember right those are both state uh that's correct roads uh how, how is this project working with the state on that or is that just are, are they kind of completely out of scope of what is happening here well, I'll let Gene answer, who has been working uh, with the state on another project, uh, but uh, the answer would be uh, very carefully in general. Hi, uh, that's a great question, because those really, those two streets really are the, the hardest part of our project and they're right through the middle of it. They're kind of the, the reason, they're the divide, they're the reason for this project um, in a way to exist just because that, that connection um, uh, is really broken by them through the middle, those two streets. So Farmington is actually um, owned by the city of Beaverton. It was transferred to the city um, many years ago. Um, so it's no longer ODOT. Um, we own it and we operate it. Um, but Canyon Road is an ODOT facility. Um, they own it, they operate it. We operate the signals for the state um, uh, through an agreement that we have with them. Um, but uh, ODOT, um, you know, I mentioned earlier our community advisory committee. We'll also have a technical advisory committee. Um, very typical in projects um, like this, where you invite um, both all of your internal key staff um, that have expertise to bring um, to the project, as well as staff from other agencies that kind of overlap and intersect with the work. Um, so we'll be including ODOT in that and asking for planning staff, as well as their um, roadway um, engineering um, operations staff to participate in our process. Um, those two intersections of, you know, Canyon at Holland Watson um, are both key intersections and uh, we'll, be, we'll be wanting to see what kind of changes we might be able to make there. Um, there's a lot of demand on, on Canyon there, east-west. Um, uh, you know, I can't remember how many vehicles a day Dan said something about like 30,000. It's 30 um, and, and, you know, and pre COVID. And yeah. you know, an interesting thing, Gene, is I was asking Jabra, who's the city traffic engineer, if we if we had any idea of the origin and destinations of those trips, because I'm very curious, you know, are these people that are Beavertonians? Are these people, you know, making longer distance trips? And the answer is really don't know. So it's curious because that's a big, those are big stakeholders in this project. Uh, because they, you know, they would potentially have, uh, I wouldn't say a lot to lose, but they could, they could be affected. Uh, and uh, it'd be interesting to have a little more information. And this may be one of those subsequent studies that we do if, you know, there's an appetite at some point in the future to really, you know, make some significant changes, because we'd have to know how that would affect the regional grid. Like Gene said, those are important connections, uh, east, west, and 
uh, you know, the main ones, I think, in all of Beaverton. Does that answer your question, Michael? Is that helpful? Yeah. Great. Anyone else have a question? I have some others I'm going to ask Dan. I'm going to put him on the spot. But they're oh, easy. Um, so, um, Dan, do we have funding to build the project? We do not have funding right now. Uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, we're doing uh, the community engagement to build some strong support. Uh, we do have a lot of interest uh, by the council and by Bira. Bira is the uh, redevelopment agency that is funding uh, our uh, study. And there's a prospect of getting some funding from them in the future. Uh, this, I believe, is a strong project in terms of being able to get funding in other places, whether they be state or federal sources. Uh, justifying it as economic development or safety. Uh, and this is also something that we're going to keep an eye on as we go through the planning process to make sure that we can go out and get uh, the funding that's necessary. Uh, the only other thing I would say with respect to funding is, uh, you know, the funding is not secure, but, uh, you know, we are trying to keep, uh, we are trying to make sure that what comes out of the planning process is is buildable. And part of being buildable is something that uh, can potentially be financed uh, within this context. Great. Um, and then um, how do people sign up if they want to get updates about the project? They can go onto our website <laughs> uh, and there's a link you can, uh, you can click on. And uh, yes, that was one thing I wanted to say, please. Uh, we, we'd love to have uh, participation. This is going to be a multi-step process. Uh, this isn't something where we're going to come to you when we have the answer. You know, we're going to be coming to you, the community, various times, first at the level of vision, second at the level of design alternatives, and then third at the level of the preferred alternative. So, uh, you know, this I think would be a, a very interesting and, and good opportunity to, uh, to have your voice heard. And, uh, you know, I'd like to think we have a good team uh, to, that is, yeah, there we go. Exactly. Uh, but yes, please. Um, Great. Okay, but yeah, so if you want to learn more about the project, um, you can go to our project website. Um, we've got some of it also translated into Spanish, um, but that's where you can find our participate button, um, as well as just general information about the project and the background, and then um, this again describes what you heard Dan talk about tonight, our process and that schedule. And please, you know, I think my information is on there. At any point, if you have any questions or ideas, uh, you know, feel free to give me a call or, or send me an email. You know, like I said, really, uh, the, the goal of the project is to help the downtown and, and connect the downtown, but the means are really uh, to try to, you know, improve the bicycling experience. Uh, and, you know, we need to be able to, to, to have a project that does that and explain why it does it. And I think you guys can really be helpful in that way to tell us, hey, listen, this isn't really doing anything. This, this alternative just, you know, it might look good, but it's really not changing our experience. Or this alternative is quite good. It, it may not have a lot of infrastructure to it, but it's making the changes that we really need. You know, that kind of feedback is really important. Great. Well, Dan, thank you so much for joining and giving us this information and welcome to the city. And we look forward to having you come back and give us more information and we will be working to have somebody from our committee uh, be involved. Great. Thanks. And do you guys mind if I hang out a little bit just to see what else you're talking about? By all means. Okay. All right, Jean, so I think we have been ticking things off here. Uh, I think the next one would be our strategic plan action items. Yeah. Right? Um, I believe so, let me pull up the agenda. So we've talked about these um, in recent meetings and I have a few updates to share with all of you. I don't know if any of you have other updates to share. Um, but I'll, how about I start off sure. and you guys can also ask me questions. Um, so 
And John, I apologize, I've not been in touch with you um, to share with you personally things I have found out about the repair station. So you're gonna get this live in our meeting. Um, so uh, uh, to recap, um, you'll remember that John um, uh, has a, a, a um, uh, an interest in the repair stations. Um, these are the bike tool stations where there's tools and a pump. Um, they're often located right next to um, bike parking areas. And there are several in Beaverton um, at the TriMet Max stations at the Whole Foods. And then there's the one in front of um, the Beaverton uh, Central Library downtown. Um, so uh, I did a little investigating uh, on the one that's at the Beaverton Library, um, uh, really to kind of find out what do we know about it? Um, uh, how is it for us to be the owners and um, kind of managers of that station? Um, and really kind of hear from um, the, the staff at Beaverton, um, anything that they would pass along, because I think our interest has been in are there uh, other places where we'd like to see these? Um, and uh, pursue that as a project. That's really been John's push is there's a lot of other places that would really benefit from having a bike station because it's a great way to um, both, it's a, it's a service for riders. It also helps encourage people to ride. Um, uh, it's just a really nice asset to have in the city. Um, so I did a little outreach and I've spoken to folks both at our public works operations um, as well as within um, the city uh, and our facilities department. What I found out um, is that uh, neither group owns or is sort of op maintains that station. Um, I have one more um, call in to someone. I'm glad to see you smiling and laughing. Um, uh, I have one more call in to someone, um, uh, but they've been out of the office. Um, it was just this last week that I that I kind of heard back from all the um, all the folks. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from someone from the library um, and to just confirm, is there something that they know about it? Um, and, you know, it just may be the mystery um, about that bike station that's located there. Um, what I really wanted to, wanted to hear was, um, oh, yes, uh, we know about that. And we go out, you know, once a year, we do some sort of maintenance activity or on it or um, we never hear about it or we hear about it all the time, but I didn't, nobody has um, any sort of record of it. So um, it's helpful info to know, um, but I did, um, uh, I did not um, uh, either hear resistance from public works, at least at the initial concept um, of that, that, that this is a, um, that a repair station is something that we could continue to pursue. So. Uh, uh, if there's interest there, I think I'd like to. And, and my thought has been really that we should, um, John, you created a great list and I should go in and find the document um, and pull it up on screen. You know, you did a great brainstorm of many locations that would benefit. Um, and then just last month we had Bruce Barbarash from THPRD here and he really liked the idea of the bike stations on THPRD's trails and he could already, he was already thinking of places where they um, were might be suitable to have one. Um, so I think there's definitely a path there to continue to pursue. Um, I think if we were to con uh, consider um, making, um, it we'd have to make a general fund to ask um, through transportation planning to um, have the funding to get one installed. I think we'd want to think about criteria for locating it, you know, lo locating another one somewhere. Um, so I think that's, that, that would be my suggestion for sort of for a next step in the process because John's got a great list, and the question is, how do we um, how do we narrow that and and make a recommendation that way? Um, so I'm going to stop there. I can tell John's got some thoughts um, and wants to offer some input. I'm going to go find your document while while you're talking here. If I can call on you, John, and you're muted. Uh, here we go. Uh, just a couple of. Um, Thoughts. Uh, I don't know how many of you follow the Bike Portland site. Um, Jonathan Mouse is the editor of that, and he does a great job just kind of capturing news about biking around the Portland metro area. And uh, he 
just had a really interesting article recently about the addition of a bike tool station, like we're talking about, on the trolley trail. Uh, hope, hopefully you all know where the trolley trail is. It's a really uh, well done trail from Selwood uh, down, uh, down south. And uh, anyway, in collaboration with Metro and ODOT and Clackamas County, um, they, uh, I guess they all three went in and jointly funded this um, bike uh, tool station and some, some really nice uh, parking, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, rack, rack things. Um, so they're, they're moving forward and, and I think recognizing that that is a needed and a nice addition. Uh, I, uh, I talked with Mike and uh, he kind of pointed me towards uh, maybe looking at the Eichler Park. Um, as I understand it, that's run by Tualatin Hills Park District. And uh, that's a really nice asset for Beaverton. Um, uh, I've been by there two or three times and there's always kids there jumping and um, having fun. Uh, it's right next to the fire station. And I, I just can't think of a better spot. If, if we can only do one thing, uh, let's put one there. Um, but I guess the main thing I wanted to say is I, um, I would really like to see something done. Uh, I'd like to, you know, see this, I'd like to help this committee get something done um, that will help biking. And um, I, I, this is a small gesture. It's not a big investment, uh, practically no maintenance. And uh, I'd really like to see us, and I would even be willing to help fund it myself um, if the Beaverton can't come up with $1,000. Um, but let's make it happen. And I'd like, I'd like the support of this Bicycle Advisory Committee to, to drive this thing across the finish line and make it happen. Great, thanks, John. Um, and I'll say too, you know, um, John has done a bunch of work, and I'm going back through. He's he's shared many emails um, with his thinkings and his goings on, his goings around town to find locations. Um, and also, I'm I'm happy to support John kind of on the staff side um, with this project, as to kind of navigate um, the whole process of um, getting getting the funding, getting something installed, um, finding the location. So. You've got my support for it. And I think, you know, John, it would be great to, John and others would be great to hear from you. Uh, I think it's a great idea too, John. I mean, it's something simple, like you said, and there's no reason why a small project like this, we can't get this pushed through. You know, and as far as the, like you said, if it's, if it's financially that we can't get the money from somewhere, I would, I would assist as well in that, um, you know, with a thousand dollars, it's it's just one of those things that it's not a big ask. So I, I totally agree with what you just stated, John. Thank you. Yeah, I agree, John. And I think uh, it would probably be a good place mm -hmm. as a, an initial location within the city since it's such a high volume of uh, riders and focused towards youth. I think that would be wonderful. It's also a way that it could, if we look forward in other projects and trying to uh, encourage people as far as self-repair with their bikes, uh, that may be a tie-in with that. But I also think it may just be the beginning of it. And let's look at those other ways that we can uh, be reaching out to Bruce and uh, tapping in as far as with THPRD and start having them maybe identify places on the trail and maybe we can make that proposal be, this is the seed money, if you will, we're putting one in here at a high volume place in Beaverton, but let's work with our partners and look how this grows uh, throughout uh, the city. That It's something that's helping to promote cycling by taking that uh, concern about having a repair issue when you're riding. Uh, some degree out of the equation. And uh, I think it'd be a good way overall of promoting cycling within the area.
Sorry, John, uh, just to make sure I got this for the minutes, uh, which was the park you suggested if there were to be one station? Well, I, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly, so pardon me, but it's uh, Eichler, E-I-C-H-L-E-R. Gotcha, thank you. It's like right in Farmington and Menlo. where the little pump track is. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I brought this um, PDF up on the screen. These are some photos that John took of, um, after our last meeting, right, John, you went out and um, checked out Sano Creek Trail and a couple of other trails for potential sites. So this is more in response to the opportunity to work with Bruce at THPRD on locations. Yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, just a couple of those just seem like logical places, uh, you know, along the Fano Creek Trail and the Powerline Trail. Uh, I, I was just using the criteria, you know, there's bicyclists going through there. Uh, there's uh, some type of shelter, um, some type of play structure, uh, and um, a bathroom. Uh, those are, you know, just the rough criteria. If, they had all of those. I, I took photographs, and th those were the four locations. Great. Okay. Um, so, any other thoughts? John, I think after tonight, you and I should connect and talk more about next steps. Does that make sense? I, I'd love that, and uh, I'd be happy to speak to if we need to talk to some uh, budget. Uh, person about the outlay uh, or maintenance people about the installation. I'd be happy to help with the installation too. Uh, I, I just need uh, somebody like you that knows how yeah. the city works to make it make it happen. Yeah, for sure. Great. We'll talk. That sounds good. Okay. And then Jean, okay. you can also, as far as uh, maybe coordinating with Bruce and how we look at partnerships yeah. with other groups and uh, yeah, I think that sounds neat and will be a nice tangible thing for the committee to yeah. have pursued. Thanks Thank again, John, for all your work on that. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I cut you all off. Right. Um, I was just saying oh, thanks again, me. John, for everything you've done. Yeah. Well, well uh, thank, thank you all and I appreciate everybody bringing in uh, in a supportive way. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, John. Um, next up on the list was um, coordinating with other bicycle advisory committees um, was an idea we had talked about. Um, I have a, a very brief update. I'm trying to remember, was this my, Michael Hashizumi? Was this your topic? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to, do you have anything, to, any updates to share before I say? Okay. No, no updates now. Okay. Um, so uh, we have been talking about this. Um, you guys identified a desire to connect with other bicycle advisory committees, um, your peers, um, really kind of in that sort of peer to peer networking and sharing. Um, I think uh, it's a really smart thing to do to find out what do other committees do? How are they organized? What's their mission? What's their focus? Um, and just kind of more broadly kind of build that, um, build some strength across the community, right? And reach out. So as you guys were talking about this, um, I came across, and now let me share my screen again. Um, uh, um, Oregon Department of Transportation, they have a state bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee. Are you seeing my website page now? Not yet. You seen the web? Not yet. Let me try it again. There it is. There it is. Okay, now you're seeing it. Great. Um, so Oregon has a bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee. They're the group that advises ODOT um, on sort of statewide bicycle and pedestrian policy and projects and programs. Um, and uh, it turns out that they have had the same thought about connecting with Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committees across the state. Um, so I've um, been in touch with, um, let me just find it. Um, I've been in touch with 
uh, their vice chair, her name's Emma Newman. Um, she, uh, she's actually down in Eugene Springfield area. Um, and so uh, they um, are wanting to uh, really just kind of make connections um, in early 2021. And um, so they, they have a list and they're trying to kind of grow it further. Um, so they, uh, I'm not sure yet kind of what, um, uh, what specific actions um, they'll be taking and how they're kind of um, seeing the, the um, their outreach will um, bring us together yet. Um, but uh, they've had the same idea. So I think um, uh, once uh, they, once we kind of get into the new year, um, I'll be in touch with them again, and we'll find out kind of how we might connect. Um, I'll also invite any of them to join us, um, and if there's an opportunity or they want to come speak with all of you and share more about what they're doing um, as the Oregon Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, um, we can also make that happen. So um, I just, that's, that's, that's my only update um, on that topic. So, you know, we're, we're moving things a little bit there. <laughs> um, and they actually, they are the ones that do have a list. And I'm just going to look here to see if it is on their page. Bear with me. Um, I know they do have contacts. They do meet uh, every month. So if you were to go to their website, um, their, their meetings are like yours. Their public meetings are open to everyone. You're more than welcome um, to log in. It looks like they meet again in a couple of weeks. Um, you can find that information here. Um, I searched ODOT OBPAC and it popped up. So check them out. Um, okay. Mike, do you, I saw you looking up to write something down. You got it? <laughs> Sorry, I scrolled. I scrolled up and down pretty quickly. All right. Okay. Great. Um, let me go back to a new share. Back to our agenda. Any questions on that? You all excited? Talk with other people just like you? Yeah, it sounds neat. I, uh, uh, I don't know if this falls in the category of new business or it's kind of in this area of working with others, but I, I've been uh, uh, kind of part of the Salmonberry Trail uh, activity for the last couple of years and uh, we're starting to take small uh, work parties of eight to 12 out on the Salmonberry Trail, um, clearing invasive species and uh, uh, getting, getting uh, the track, the trail cleaned up. And uh, there's really a good bunch of people that are involved with uh, this foundation and um, it's not just solely focused on biking. It also is uh, equally uh, hiking and equestrian even. But um, um, this is something that maybe some of you on the Beaverton Bicycle Advisory Committee might be interested. Uh, um, each month, there's going to be a work party that goes out. Uh, we're going out on Saturday. Um, uh, and I, I can see this happening, you know, on a regular basis. So if this is at all of interest, either formally with the Beaverton Bicycle Advisory Committee, or if you all as individuals are interested in uh, uh, contributing and volunteering uh, to support this amazing project, uh, uh, let me know. I, I, uh, I, I think I could help there. Okay. Thanks, John. Great. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, okay. And then the last one here, um, Safe Routes to School Support. Um, so we've talked here about, um, uh, at, at your strategic planning session back in February, the idea was let's um, create some opportunities to go um, do uh, safety, education, encouragement um, programs in the schools to support the Safe Routes program. That was all before COVID. Now everything's virtual. Um, and we've talked here about, is there a way to do videos? Is there um, 
uh, another way to kind of deliver that as um, a program. Um, so uh, I, I today I talked with Kian Park, who's in our um, the mayor's office on the events um, team. Um, and just because we had talked with him about, you know, he's had this experience doing videos with um, uh, our virtual night market this summer. Um, and as he and I talked more through it, um, uh, I think um, for us and, and having heard more about what's happening with the Safe Routes program, um, I think for us, it, it, we should think about shifting the idea of um, of creating um, a series of videos. I think it's a it's a bigger lift than I think the events team is able to support us at this time. Um, and what I'd like to do is if there's and I can't remember who was the uh, uh, who sort of wanted to be lead on this. Um, it might have been Michael Dunleavy, and he's not here this evening. So I will loop back with him, and um, uh, I think we need to kind of brainstorm another way we might do this. Um, and if need be, if, if providing some virtual materials um, uh, isn't something we're able to do, I think there's, you know, I, I think we can, maybe we're starting to see the light at the end of the, end of the tunnel with COVID. Um, and maybe at some point here soon, we can start to think about shifting back to some sort of in-person, um, maybe even next school year. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you on, um, on that front. Um, it's a big lift to put together videos and having talked it through with Kyung, I think our, our safer bet is to um, keep working with the Safe Route staff with Leah and um, see what other ideas we might be able to come up with. Um, if there's something we can do this year, I loved how John is like, I want us to do something. Um, I think uh, it'd be good to find out what that might be. So um, there's my update there. And I'll, I'll connect with Michael after tonight since he wasn't here. Okay. Any other thoughts or ideas on that? Did Kyung by chance have any further ideas or updates as far as Bike Beaverton and what we want to try to do? Why? Why, yes, of course we talked about that. Because I, I knew you would ask. I said, Kyung, you're going to ask. Um, so, um, Bike Beaverton, um, if you remember, we were supposed to have it in May because we had switched it this calendar year from a summer event to a spring event to tie it in with Bike Month. Um, so, the update is there are no official decisions yet on any events in 2021, still too, still too soon. Um, and at the same time, right, you heard from our mayor elect, we're going through a lot of changes um, over the next you know, few months. Um, we have a new city manager joining us. Um, we have a new council coming on board. Um, and you know, Kyung, Kyung said he's still hopeful that we'll be able to have that event. Um, we're not yet saying no, we're not yet saying yes, but we're um, maintaining hope um, that by late May, we might be able to have some sort of an event. Um, and Ken had a great way of thinking about it. He said, he, he doesn't describe it. This is, there's not gonna be a light switch with COVID, right? It'll be probably something that's more like a gradual transition back. Um, I thought that was a really great way to sort of think about the, the, the position we're in now. Um, so there's no decision that it's off for May at this point um and uh you know nothing's been nothing at, at this point's been canceled yet so you know still on still sort of on the calendar for may um we're just not yet ready to make any decisions so okay yeah don't make any plans for that late may time frame um <laughs> we may still have an event um and uh at some point here we'll we'll have him come back and join us again and share updates once he's got something, some news to, to bring to us. Okay. Any questions on Bike Beaverton? Um, one thing I, I will share with all of you while I think of it, um, uh, you all as Beaverton residents get the Your City um, City newsletter that comes to your house every other month, right? Bi-monthly. Um, so there is a, um, a little blurb um, thank you, Mike, for your help with writing that little article. Um, there's a blurb about the bike ride um, that we took back in October. Was it October? 
um, to uh, remember Adrian and his service. So there's a photo of all of you um, who are there and a little blurb. And Mike, the article is even shorter than when you last saw it. Um, <laughs> so look for that. Um, you're, you're, you guys are featured in there. Um, but there's also other updates on of all the other boards and commissions. It's a little bit of sort of the end of year um, newsletter edition of your city. So you'll see other updates from all the other boards and commissions. So look for that um, in your mailboxes. I think in January is when it is when it will arrive. So, great. Great. I don't think there's any other updates I can think of from me. Um, so. Well, let me open it up to the rest of the members of the committee. Anything that you have comments or things you want to share or announcements? Uh, Amy, I'd be interested in anything that's going on with uh, the youth uh, advisory group with the mayor. Yeah, sure. I can give you a quick update. Um, so basically we've kind of started um, dividing into subcommittees for this year. So we have four subcommittees. We have an advocacy group, a community involvement group, a diversity and equity group, and um, we have a youth homelessness group. And so we're just starting our projects on that. And um, I'm in the advocacy subcommittee. And so one of the first projects we're going to be working on um, is some sort of pamphlet or um, awareness campaign for mental health. And I'm planning on putting some sort of information in about um, how like biking and outdoor activities can be helpful with that. So I'm excited about kind of bringing in that information um, from here and yeah that's basically where we're at with MYAB and and all of that stuff so yeah okay. well let us know if there's anything we can do to assist uh, as you're working on that be happy to help out yeah, of course other members what's going on anybody been out riding in the elements I don't really have anything okay. right now. Yes, I have been riding a little bit out in the elements. It's 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 a love hate relationships, but yeah, it's it, it's fun. <laughs> yep. Well, I've got one thing I was just going to share, and then anybody else can chime in. This was something that I saw back in September. Uh, I included it in a little article in the newsletter for Washco Bikes, and then uh, I was going to share it in October and forgot. But Washington County, uh, they have installed, I believe it is uh, three intersections uh, so far. It's actually thermal bike distinguishing video detection systems. So it's able to discern the thermal image shape of somebody on a bicycle. So as far as triggering the lights, that's uh, now a way that it's being done. Uh, the locations Rock Creek and Parkview Boulevards approaching 185th. Uh, on Parkway approaching Cedar Hills Boulevard and on 85th Avenue approaching uh, Durham Road uh, across from Hall Boulevard. And so cyclist no longer needs to push a button to trigger the light or wait hoping that the, the camera sees and that's actually with this thermal detection. Cost is about $15,000 and $25,000 per intersection, uh, but they do say there's additional locations are planned for fiscal year 2021-22. So it's interesting, some new technology that's coming in, because I know that's Many times uh, the bane of cyclists' existence is being at a light when there's not vehicular traffic to trigger the light and you're waiting for it. So it's interesting, some new technology that may help in expediting that and also I think is improving safety. Anybody else have anything they want to share for the good of the order for our committee? Mm -hmm. 
Well, not hearing anything, then I think, Gene, is there anything else that we need to cover? I guess our next meeting will be in 2021. Correct. Um, right, I believe our next meeting will be Thursday, January 14th, right? We meet the second Thursday. Right. Okay. Great. I don't have any other updates. Um, uh, you know, Mike and I will meet um, ahead of time um, to plan our agenda and just know that, you know, we'll have a few new faces um, joining us. And uh, so we'll, we'll definitely have some time for us to uh, introduce ourselves and welcome them and let them introduce themselves to us. Um, so that will be um, a fun part of our meeting next time. Um, I just want to look in the chat to make sure, um, and, and maybe if there's anyone um, who's still there uh, in the audience, I'll say, um, who wants to uh, ask a question or um, share their thoughts, if you want to go ahead and put something in the chat, um, or if you want to um, share a comment, we can elevate you to a panelist so we can hear your voice. I see that. Sean Martinez joined us, um, and I know Annie Ashton's also listening in. So, give you all a minute. Otherwise, yeah, Mike, I'm all set. I don't have anything else for you this evening. Uh, Sean, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. It's glad to have you attend. Sean said thanks for letting me attend. Great. Thanks, you come back um, anytime. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, everyone, 2020, this is our last meeting. <laughs> um, let's hope 2021, um, uh, we can only, you know, imagine um, uh, kind of leaving the pandemic behind, hopefully at some point. So um, things, look, things look a little brighter for next year. And again, thanks everybody for all of your involvement and help this year and i throw the idea that 2021 hopefully it will be a more interesting and hopeful year for us and uh, as we plan for our january meeting if anybody has uh things that you'd like to uh, include on the agenda why don't you shoot uh gene and i a uh, note if you have ideas on creative uh, zoom oriented icebreakers that you've been doing in other parts of your lives, why don't you share those? That would be good in our first meeting. Uh, be open to all input that you might have. Otherwise, everyone have a great holiday season and we'll see everyone next year. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks Thank all. You, Mike. Take care. All right, take hey, care. Everyone. Bye everyone.